Bracey Armand Wright, born July 1st, 1984. Today's feature is the stunner growth story of one of the best college guards of the early 2000s that I watched coming up and took an interest in mainly because of his tenacity and fearlessness as a scorer. Also because Vibrant Thing was one of my favorite songs ever. Check it out now. Sitting back with this mic in my hand. Spitting hot shit, trying to see green. And probably the best crossover song of all time next to Hey Ya. He's had a pretty successful basketball career, I'd say, that includes just 26 games on the NBA level. He's found tremendous success overseas where he became a champion and MVP. But back to those 26 games. As a McDonald's All-American, some had this guy poised to be great at the next level. But for these reasons, that didn't happen. So, what did? It's your boy Jay-Z, Stunner Growth. Ash, got him. Wright is from Dallas, Texas, and attended the Colony High School alongside NBA All-Star guard Deron Williams. He was highly recruited by all the major schools in the country, mainly because of how well he scored the ball and his smooth knack for knowing how and when to get shots up. Reminds me a lot of Gilbert Arenas in the natural green light they always carry on offense and the mold he could have succeeded in if not for these things. Stunt number one, undersized for the position. As hinted at earlier, Bracey was stuck with playing the off guard to Deron Williams all throughout high school where at 6'3 would cause red flags later in his career. Williams was a standout point guard that did it all as an amateur, especially in high school, so there was no need for Wright to spend time at the point guard. Problem with that is, if he's not to grow any taller than 6'3 and not be a pest on defense, along with a few things we'll mention later, it will only get difficult for him to appeal to scouts, GMs, and franchises that see most of the game on paper. Wright for his size needed that point guard experience and so does anyone coming up that plays a taller position and aren't the ideal height as yet. Don't expect that to one day come and build your game around that expectation. Having this many past examples and channels like stunted growth, that should not still be happening. But in the early 2000s, the times were different. Remember, this is still the Allen Iverson era for the most part, along with other smaller guards who had the ability to succeed off the ball just as much as they did at the one. Thing with those guys was, they all could play significant minutes at the point guard, and most of them pretty much played point all throughout their amateur career. Right, having spent no time playing point guard at 6'3", that can be tricky for both he and a franchise to invest their future in. Wright chose Indiana as his college choice and immediately was a game changer for the program. He came in right away and led the team in scoring at 16 points a game and 5 rebounds, along with shooting 37% from 3, taking his team to the tournament and losing in the second round. As a sophomore, he upped his points and rebounds while playing almost the entire game at 38 minutes per. The team missed a tournament this and the following year, which could be the reason for him sliding in the draft. He finished his Hoosier career, a two-time first-team All-Big Ten performer, starting every game he's played in the uniform. Leaving early for the draft, Wright had lost some of the buzz he had as a freshman and even as a sophomore. He was projected a late first round to early second round pick, but slid all the way to the 47th pick in the second round, taken by Minnesota. A lot of the slippage had to do with projecting him on the next level as an undersized shooting guard that didn't really wow at scoring at 17 points a game for his college career and also on the defensive end where he was not only on the smaller side but didn't show he could defend on ball or play the passing lanes at just point nine steals a game in college. More red flags were raised for me, at least when I saw who they took in the first round as a lottery pick and also where he was headed. Stunt number two, space to thrive. Being drafted by Minnesota, who was still going through the repercussions of the Joe Smith scandal, was not the team to go to for a guy with obvious holes in his game, specifically understanding where he would play on that level. 
the team, while really bad, were eager for the next franchise cornerstone to replace Garnett, who was on the tail end of his prime and at this time, the franchise weren't stable to say the least, with players coming in and out that didn't help build loyalty across the entire culture of the team. What that meant for Bracey was that his rope was very short and he had to answer the team's burning questions about his game fast or for a second round pick with no contract security, he could be another franchise casualty. Another thing I noticed on draft night was that one of my favorite guards that year was drafted behind a guy whom many had high expectations for and thought was the first Brad Beal in Rashard McCants who was taken in the same year at 14. A lottery pick with tons of room to grow contractually and the same amount of team interest in him succeeding. This left no room for Bracey, who was almost immediately sent to the D-League, only playing 7 NBA games as a rookie and 19 as a second year player. Like I said, the team had Kevin Garnett still, Richard McCants and an unstable culture that Bracey Wright couldn't thrive in 100%. After just 26 league games, he was off to building his overseas career that lasted five times longer than his NBA career did. Uh, it's been a little tough. Uh, we've had a few guys, including myself, who's been uh, out with injury, you know, for a little while, most of the preseason. So uh, it's been a little difficult, but, um, you know, we're, we're going in the right direction. It was a bit sad to see because I like Bracey's game in college, but I also knew that he would struggle in the league mainly because of his size and lack of defensive presence. And it's not like he was a project that could change, nor did the franchise give him the time and space to. His demeanor has always been on the quieter end, where his game does the talking, but as a guy that's looking to be switched to point guard with lack of experience, I think a good point to start is with the ability to vocally lead men. Stunt number three, all main, no sides. In marriage or a serious relationship, this may work, but in basketball, if you're an undersized player, you better possess other facets of your game that can help a team and you better be above adequate in those things. Wright was a scorer through and through in that he never saw a shot he didn't think he could make and never turned down the chance to take those shots. But he didn't assist well enough. His rebounding was average in college and below for the NBA. His free throw game left a little to be desired and he didn't defend well enough to justify keeping him around. And that's what it boils down to when you're a smaller guy for your position with no size to your game that they can plug and play you into. Can we play him at the one? Well, no, because he has no real experience there and his leadership for that position isn't better than the point guards we have now. Well, can we leave him at the two, his natural position? Well, no, because guys like Kobe and bigger two guards will feed on him like Shaq says. What's that? <laughs> Barbecue chicken alert! Barbecue chicken alert! He also doesn't rebound or pass well enough in those spots, and it's not like he's a quick-release, knockdown shooter. So you can see where it became hard to keep Bracey around, because although a solid scorer, he doesn't have enough sides to the dish. After his second season in Minnesota, the team didn't offer to sign him, so he took his talents overseas, where he's been ever since 2007, and he's even made it his permanent home today. In the 2015 Super League Finals, he averaged 19 points a game and was named Finals MVP. His overseas career lasted 13 years and allowed him to play and use his skill to provide for himself and family. So all in all, I think that's awesome. He's still one of my favorite early 2000s guards that I think gets lost in the memory shuffle and a player that younger generations deserve to hear about. And that's got to be just thinking because they didn't have time to rehearse or practice to get ready. Right from about 25 and a half feet. His heels were on the hip. His story, from my perspective, is a great one that I'm sure he can tell a lot better than I can, but I wish him nothing but the best and respect to everything he's brought to the game. But for these reasons, his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth, and I'm out.